everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. The numbers, Mason, what do they mean? This is a short little numbers section, segment, whatever you want to call it, about Nidhi Sandy's debut average over time. Let's take a look at it. We have... Etheria, Luxium, Noctix went up, Eluna was really the highest, XLA, Crisis, TTT, and Anoth all went down. We have on the JP side, Ranunculus, Salome was huge, Volt Action, Idios, they all dropped around uh, 2023 a bit. Mitarashi went up, 3SKM went up, and Ayaki, Ayakaki, the recent one, went down a bit. It's basically, I mean, these things are kind of normal. Uh, they go up and down, they bounce up and down a lot. But this is showing that recently, at least in the last year or so, uh, EN, uh, last two years actually, EN has not been doing well while, you know, uh, JP has been bouncing up and down. But that's not necessarily a bad thing on JP side. It's just taking a look at a little bit of everything here. And it says, note that the data before Ethereum's debut is unavailable. No data debuts of Cydia or Aiden Gumi or earlier. Not great, not terrible, but it shows they're not doing a great job of using existing livers to promote their new debuts. That's what Hololive does, and others do that. They freaking go crazy on the Blitz to try to get old livers who already have established fan bases to kind of, you know, puff up the new ones to kind of get people to watch them and then see if they're going to extend the fan base that way. Uh, and it says, a new range of debuts is a great opportunity to pick up new fans of the brand because people feel uncomfortable joining a deeply entrenched community. But after watching a new talent for a while, some will gravitate to an older channel. Yes, they will. That happens. It's so a whole process of cross-promotion and collabs. Absolutely the best. That's why collabs within an agency are very, very useful. I find it interesting how Hollow Talents reacted to the new EN gen. Brand new. The branch grew so big that they managed to snag quite a few skilled individuals, which made those who saw the debuts think that they are not on the same level as the new hires. It inspired them to be better and do better, and that's a great inspiration to have, absolutely. And I hope they all, you know, enjoy their time at Hololive. Vispo just had a large data breach. It is big. Uh, pretty much every single person who went for Vispo could have their personal information breached and could have had the personal information just put out there in the public. Uh, let's see what happens specifically. The audition application form of the major VTuber agency Vispo is set up so that the personal information of 7,000 applicants can be viewed, which is scary. If you access the audition application with, uh, with a Google account, editing rights will be shared. All personal information, including real name, phone number, name of person involved, reason for applying will be viewable. After a while, the settings will be changed so that editing rights will not be shared from the application from now on. However, those who have already been given editing rights, it is unclear how many people there are, can still view the information. So if you're applying now, it may be best to refrain from doing so. Also, contact the agency a week ago, but there has also been no reply, and there has been no official announcement that there has been information leaked. Vispo did respond, and the response pretty much says, uh, it's in Jap Japanese, but the response pretty much says that you can only view it if you have the link to it. So if you don't have the link to the Google Doc, which I think is no longer available at this point, then uh, you won't be able to view it. It was a mistake. Uh, we're currently verifying the information regarding the Vispo JP auditions. As a result, we will temporarily suspend accepting applications for auditions. Starting out the situation, we'll provide an update. And it says only JP or does include EN. They've shut EN auditions due down due to it. Also possibility the leak hit there as well. This could dox all the VTubers that applied. That's really, really, really huge stuff. Virtual Entertainment Inc. and Brave Group have to close the audition form and beef up security, they can't afford to sink their reputation even further. And it has been a response to the event. It says, in short, you can read it if you have the URL, but the URL is not public. How did someone get the URL? A mole? It's stupid that someone read, read permissions, an important document. You, yeah, you're not supposed to have read permissions there. Um, you just have, you know, the, the regular permissions, and then you shouldn't have any permissions on any of the data that's there. Number of data is leaked. Brave Group 2610, Vspo says 7,000. Hare Vare V Liver, 1,043. And it hits everybody. It's hitting everybody. That's what they're mentioning here. It hits everybody. So the apology regarding uh, personal information leak. Official Vspo account operated by our group posted the information regarding Vspo JP auditions. While our investigation is currently ongoing, we have discovered there's a possibility of similar personal information uh, uh, leaks occurring on the same day as the Brave Group General Audition uh, by the Hare Vare V Live edition. Uh, we would like to offer our deepest apologies. We're currently continuing to carefully investigate the matter. Overview is on June 25th, we discovered responses to the Google form for applicants of the Vispo JP audition were viewable by a third party who had learned the edit URL of the format, like basically had gotten uh, editing rights for it. 
a cloud service Google Drive used by our group. However, the edit URL was not publicly available to the edition site. So someone, a mole somewhere, found the editable URL, the, ed the editing rights URL. And we believe it is highly likely that the edit URL was leaked in some way. In addition, we're currently investigating access history to find out. They're trying to find out who it is, who did this. Uh, information leaks on the same day of Brave Group, seeing who was the mole. They're trying to figure it out. Details are currently under investigation, but the current situation is as follows. However, please note that this is the only information known up to this point and may change as a result to further investigations. Approximately 7,000 responses were available for viewing. Those affected by the leak, all those who applied to the VSPO HJP audition, uh, period during which this may have occurred, uh, 6-4 to 625, name, prefecture, phone number, date of birth, SNS used, reason for applying, Brave Group General Audition, the same type of stuff or during the same period, high divided edition, same stuff during the same type of period, viewing editing scope of the Google Forms editing URL was set to anyone on the internet who has the link. Yes, it's one of those things. It, it is uh, scary to have that, but yeah, they messed up on that one. I and mean, anyone who had the link could view that kind of stuff. That's the, re that's the, that's the issue. Someone leaked it somewhere. Possible that a third party requested editing permissions for the editing URL. Administrator granted it for some reason. When we checked the 1715, which is 515 in the afternoon, uh, we found no evidence that editing privileges had been granted to a specific person. So it seems someone leaked the, uh, the link. Possible for some reason the editing URL was leaked. Possible editing URL was leaked due to unauthorized access. They uh, they restricted access to the URL and to all that kind of stuff. It basically got it, through their own checks and balances. They noticed the above issue, and that's what it was. They basically noticed it themselves, and they are basically telling on themselves. I guess is a way of saying it. They are making sure people know about this. And here is Vspo's response to this. Uh, we the it's, it's same thing. Google form responses. Applicants JP auditions were viewable. URL was not publicly available to the edition site, so it's not like a bunch of people got it. It's just some mole somewhere got it. We understand that we should promptly apologize to and contact each of those affected by the leak. However, due to the circumstances described above, we ask that you please wait a little longer. Additionally, as a result of the investigation into the matter, it is possible that similar information leaks may have occurred for other group sites. And that's what they're mentioning here. And here is some data that Kore Kore put out. We know Kore. I have my issues with Kore Kore. Uh, he's like the Japanese Keem star. But he has actual data here that shows leaks of information. This actual information that could be seen by the people there. And this is the big deal that people are having here. A lot of people are like, oh my god, it shouldn't be so big. But the fact is, this kind of stuff is leaked. That is never good. And they have actual proof that someone could view it. So some mole somewhere found it and leaked the information. All right. Right now, we have Nidhi Sanji. If you remember correctly, a while back, like about a month ago or so, they decided that they were going to be doing an NBA collab. It was more with Rakuten, I believe, who also has NBA rights and stuff like that. Uh, they have Vox Akuma, Uki Violeta, Kanae, Fuwa, Luca, Ver Vermillion, Ilir Pandora, Sunny, Kotoka, and Yuki Wilson. And now they have some other stuff. Here's the actual tweet, just so you know it is real. Here's their information with the Bulls. They just basically have a regular shirt with uh, the logo emblazoned in it. You know, basically, it looks like maybe a jersey might be a jersey might not be a jersey uh lira pandora doesn't have anything nba related with it he oh, barely 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 on the blue holy crap uh they're trying to make them look cute i mean some of their designs don't look bad i'll be honest with you i'll be honest with you this is phase one but some of their designs don't look horrible uh sunny briscoe looks the most like an nba type of thing out of all of them but yeah they don't look horrible per se it's an awesome collab merch looks great however niji uh and Palverse figures, the stuffed toy Alira left eye is in the incorrect color. Ah, okay. It is uh, supposed to be that. Okay. Well, of course, Chibi-san's hands too short. They all look so cute. I'll eat them. So people are happy about it. And people here, so you know what's odd? They dropped this announcement the same day of the cancellation of the Niji concerts. I wonder why. Maybe they're trying to, you know, cut up the uh, disappointment from people and give them something to like. Who knows? I mean, it could be a PR move. I wonder if they dropped the NBA Goods announcement earlier to soften the blow of AX Niji concert because it was canceled, unfortunately. Not that it helped anyways because they knew fans would be angry and upset, rightfully so, because some of them actually ended up, you know, showing up to Los Angeles where it's at, that city where it's at, and they paid all that money to get there. And it's just money wasted, pretty much. Technically, there's more new fan. There's only a few fans that are going to be annoyed at the concert cancellation with the horrendous ticket sales. So nice of them to release after the NBA Finals is over. Yeah, they released it. Like, it just doesn't make sense that they released it after the NBA Finals were over. Like, it's, it's just weird. It's a weird, weird uh, thing that Nidhi Sanji does, but Nidhi Sanji does this all the time. We have a message from Shachi. 
something that I'm going to take to heart and everyone else should take to heart. Remember, if I create art or provide my voice for projects under my name, Shachi, please do not give credit to another entity. It's as if the names are interchangeable. This is just out of respect for them. Like I said, I'm taking that into account as well. I find it quite disrespectful and I would prefer it if you not. Just saying in case anyone cares about how I feel about it. Thank you. It's rarely been done with ill intent. Just want to make sure my stance is clear on it now. Of course, if Shachi is there, then Shachi is there. It's of course in response to videos about rainbow retirees and other ones putting these things there. It is Shachi, of course. Shachi slash, you know, we, we all know who Shachi is in Hollow Life, but it is Shachi, of course, because unless it was credited as the person they are in Hollow Life, then they did not do it as the person they are in Hollow Life. They did it as Shachi. And that's, of course, something that we should all take into account. Video's gone now, thankfully. Luckily, they removed it because of what Shachi had. Of course, out of respect for Shachi, and I'll give respect to the person who removed it out of respect for Shachi. Uh, people really need to understand, unless the person behind it, the talent specifically, say that they're fine with it, keep their multiple identities separate. Using Mint as an example. While it's common knowledge now that Pomo is Mint, treat Mint as Mint. Exactly. Mint is Mint. Sayo is Sayo. Doki is Doki. You know, uh, Matara is Matara. K9 Kuro is K9 Kuro, etc, etc, etc. Michimochi V as Michimochi V. All those people. You can use a slash and everything like that. But remember, especially, especially in their streams, treat them as their individual selves. Because that is respectful. That is the best way to do it. I am going to read this to you guys from Dr. Disrespect, giving you a bit, a quick rundown of everything that's happened lately. Dr. Disrespect got banned off of Twitch. No one knew why. Not even he knew why. Somehow he figured out how what happened. And he went and sued Twitch for breach of contract, tortious interference, that type of thing. You know, for basically uh, canceling him for something that isn't, he didn't breach the contract in any way. You know, that type of thing. He didn't do anything illegal. He didn't do anything that, that they, because they supposedly, you know, it was because of uh, Twitch didn't feel that it was right to have him there, etc., etc. So... He recently settled that lawsuit and recently he made a statement, which is what I'm going to read first. The Twitch ban. Hello, I'd like to make a quick statement. Let's cut the effing BS. As you know, there's no filter with me. I've always been up in front with you guys and real with you guys on anything I can be upfront about. I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. This is not a good move. He should have had a lawyer talk about this first and, you know, he should have made this. I don't I don't think so because this this could be this could lead to more issues for him. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community as well as those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studios. A lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with Midnight Society and I. We made a painful decision collectively to have me step down because it's bad PR for the company. It's not good for a figurehead like that to be in such kind of things, and it, it's better for the company overall. It's a good move. Our team is full of incredibly talented and good people that have high career ambitions and families, and I never want to jeopardize the culture that we have carefully crafted. Now, he's not admitting any guilt, of course, and he's not guilty of anything as far as I know, uh, especially when settlements like that, it's not admitting guilt. No side admits guilt. But here's the thing. Cancel culture came hard for him. Cancel culture came really hard for him, and he has to make sure the people under him are getting paid and they don't end up struggling more than they should, which is a good move from a leader. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations, I can now tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. This may not be true because the NDA could still be enforced. Even if someone else leaks it, does not necessarily mean that you should be able to leak it yourself. He could actually lose his settlement, possibly, with this. Uh, were the Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Were the real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual, mutual conversations that someone leaned too much in the sometimes leaned too much in the direction of being inappropriate. This is a big issue that a lot of people have grabbed onto, the inappropriate part. I'm going to go over everything that I know and everything that's known, including some leaked emails. We'll go over those things. Of course, I was not sent these emails. Uh, these emails are now public. They are in the public domain. That is how I was able to get access to them. I am not leaking any information, any, you know, uh, NDA information. I'm not leaking anything that should not be leaked. So don't worry about that. It says, um, Nothing illegal happened, no pictures were shared, no crimes were committed. I never met, even met the individual. I went through lengthy arbitration regarding a civil dispute on Twitch, with Twitch, and the case was solved by a settlement. Let me be clear, it was not a criminal case against me. No criminal charges have ever been brought against me. So it's not that, you know, people are saying he was sexting and all that kind of stuff. That's BS. There was nothing involved in that. There was nothing, at least both sides are saying there's nothing like that. It's just people bringing up 
weird ideas, you know? From a moral standpoint, I'm absolutely take responsibility. Should have never entertained these conversations to begin with. That's on me. That's on me as an adult, a husband and a father. Should never have happened. I get it. I'm not perfect and I'll effing own my ass. This was stupid. Now with all that said, I don't get, don't get it effing mistaken. I've seen the remarks and labels being thrown around loosely. Social media is a destruction zone. I'm no effing predator or P. Are you kidding me? Anyone who truly knows me effing knows that I, where I stand on those things and those types of people. F that. That's a different level of disgust. I effing hate even hearing about. Don't label me as the worst of the worst with your exaggerations. Get the F out of here with that S. Uh, but I think when I said what I needed regarding this ban itself, that's why Twitch made the decision in 2020. And to my team community, again, he apologizes for that. Sponsors, he apologizes for everything. Trust me when I say this to all my haters that live and breathe social media with zero real life experiences. I don't give an F about you. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think I'm a piece of S, that's fine. But I'm effing going. I'm not effing going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family, as mentioned on stream, which I hope the best for him. He's going to disappear for a while. People are, of course, taking it the way that is, you know, it's just going to be weird. It's just going to be the way it's going to be. It's kind of just odd the way the whole thing happens. Um, it's just a weird thing. It's just, it's just weird. All right, here we are. We're, I am joined by Elf Pirate Eva. In regards to everything, she is someone who knows a lot, way more than I do. And it is a VTuber that is also, you know, an elf VTuber and uh, has going to have a voice. It sounds recognizable. Of course, she's Eva. She's not anyone else that you can recognize, but the voice will sound recognizable. It's because, you know, she already explained to me it's petite and all that kind of stuff. Just want to let you know. Um, but this is about the Dr. Disrespect drama, the Dr. Disrespect issue. Uh, he, you know, I did a rundown previously on the whole situation, but this is someone that decided to send information to game uh, people who are big in gaming news big in news in in general and decided to send that information out there so we're going to talk about it uh what did you want to mention before we started eva yeah so basically a quick rundown of the series of events that happened here um back in 2020 2020 i believe um dr disrespect was banned from twitch and there was no reason that was actually given i'm sorry there we go uh there was no actual reason that was given for it and this was a huge disparagement there was problems uh no one knew no one uh would expand on it and in 2021 uh twitch and dr disrespect entered arbitration arbitration is similar to court only there's it's a little bit more nuance it's less in the public eye um and basically what had happened is they settled out of court um twitch paid him out the uh amount of his full contract and there was clearly some kind of non-disclosure agreement that was signed between both parties that bound them from speaking on the nature of this uh arbitration now four years later this cody person decides to you lax twitch employee he decides to just like drop a grenade of a um info bomb saying that oh she was caught texting or sexting minor um at twitchcon and he was trying to meet up with her now of course this caused a flurry of uh, people started asking questions again um some people and some journalists were coming out saying oh yeah we knew about this but there's no evidence so what ended up happening is um it later came out that this cody individual has actually leveraged this information to sell tickets to his show before um but a second media source which is the email that we're looking at right now also came out and was spread to several gamer news media outlets and is likely the document that was given to midnight studios that was the studio that dr disrespect co-founded and they ended up separating from each other as we saw from the tweet earlier now dr disrespect has admitted to communicating with a minor so regardless of anything that we have of terms of testimony second or third party um statements none of it is evidence but that's kind of irrelevant right now because we have an admission of guilt right or at least an admission of liability yes that's the big issue the big issue is that there is now, an admission of liability as a result however this document that we're looking at right here this came out and this was spread a lot around before Dr. Disrespect's tweet. And so it was interesting the parallels and how this ended up kind of collaborating in statement. But the details of this, um, basically, um... All right, I'm going to mention some stuff that I wanted to mention real quick. Um, while we get the encoding issue fixed, we're going to go over a little bit of what is going on here. 
Um, this one is a rundown of everything that was given to them when it came to the information behind this, the information behind everything that is, uh, was mentioned by Eva uh, in regards to really everything that's been uh, happening. And right now, what's going to go on is I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk about it right after. So right now, this person says, I'm sending this to multiple known sources in the game news arena. I hope this is taken in spirit, which is intended. I will keep this inbox open for 12 hours. Here's what actually happened and cannot be sold said publicly, Dr. Disrespect Camp. There were whispers between a, a, between Guy, which is, you know, Dr. Disrespect, and a 17-year-old on Twitch. The age was not known at the time. So he did not know who it was at the time, was found, in, was found out about it later. These are messages in relation to how to scale new channels using tried and tested methods. So a way of helping the, this 17-year-old this get better channel stuff, which is what the studio that he's a part of. This was a service that was offered by members of the Dr. Disrespect community, the team under a different brand name. The brand name used could be interpreted in many ways. The transcripts were part of the court proceedings and outline show no wrongdoing or anything illegality. So here is what is going to happen. Um, they're saying here, uh, the issue is what Twitch was shown some of the messages uh, and brand names used could be interpreted differently. It was interpreted differently. Certain members of the Twitch team that had taken a dislike to Dr. Disrespect. So this is people that hated him. People that didn't like him. According to this person, of course, there's no way to verify this other than Dr. Disrespect's uh, own statement that we mentioned before that I went over before. This his own statement kind of corroborates a lot of this stuff. Uh, the internal feeling was that it was it would be only a matter of time before they got him on something. So he had enemies that already disliked him and wanted to get a gotcha on him. This one, however, was way wide of the mark and wasn't what they thought it was. They thought it was a sexting issue. There was no sexting. There was no inappropriate behavior. There was no anything inappropriate, anything illegal, anything that could be seen as an adult trying to groom a minor. Nothing of that sort happened. Let me just make sure 100% clear. Nothing of that happened. Both sides agree that nothing like that happened. Mm -hmm. This became a result of a lot of back and forth on Twitch with yeah. various people. Let's get him camp and others. We can't move forward with this. So what were you saying, Eva? Yeah, I'm like, uh, I have mentioned this too. The tweet mentioned that um, things approach the line of inappropriosity, but they did not cross them. And let's all be clear here. If something did happen with a minor, regardless of they were 17 or 16 doesn't matter criminal charges would have been filing would have been filed because in arbitration they have criminal allegations come out it's the district attorney's um decision to press charges or not it's not any one parties so when it comes to the minor and comes to a minor it's out of the individual party's hands. Exactly. Uh, and continuing on with this, that's the exactly- The fact that there yeah, was ahead. no criminal charges means that there was no criminalities. Exactly. And that's what I wanted to mention. I wanted to make sure that there was that, that there was no criminality going on. Um, we're going to keep going with with uh, with this this uh, message here. It says this became, it became a result of a lot of back and forth at Twitch with uh, various people in the let's get him camp, others and we can't move forward with this camp because people knew that there was no legal thing they could do. His whispers were being monitored because a core group of influential people within Twitch wanted him gone. The whispers in question were actually from many, many, many weeks prior to his last stream. The initial explanation provided to him during the termination communication was inappropriate behavior not befitting a Twitch brand. That's all they could put on there. That's their, that's their blanket excuse they could put. He's right in what he said at the time of his go live on YouTube stream, we still don't know because for a long time, they could not commit to an explanation beyond the inappropriate behavior for a Twitch brand. That is very PR speak of like, we don't, we can't, we don't really have anything to get you on it, but we don't feel comfortable you being here. So that's the excuse that we're going to give. And this is the way it seems. Now continuing on, because this is a long document. Now I understand this reason was more specific for the Twitch higher ups that did like Dr. Disrespect. Exactly. It was an excuse that the lower end people, the people on because the bottom end, Twitch want to is still get. a private company. They don't need to give any reason to ban anybody. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't have the same protections that, like, for example, but a government. But they do need to justify it to the higher ups. Yeah, that like a government has. And um, just letting you guys know, the reason why there are moments when. Uh, there is it's seeming interruptions there aren't really interruptions or her interrupting me or me interrupting her uh there is a delay going on so i just want to let you guys know so you guys don't think that like she's interrupting me or i'm interrupting her or anything like that just giving you guys a little bit of information on that end since this is a bit of a longer one i did read over this beforehand i'll hit some bullet points uh basically the matter did go to court and it was found in discovery that the, that there were employees who wanted to get him, that there were employees, there was inappropriate behavior by the employees that broke CCPA regulations, which is Canadian protection regulations. And um, there 
they also broke data protection internal policy by disclosing to the third party that he had a contract they perceived to have happened. So they broke a lot of internal policy. They broke other privacy protection laws in there. And that's why Dr. Disrespect went against them. And it says, basically, the people there use the excuse of why would he be messaging someone who's 17? Number one, he didn't know that the person was 17. Number two, as long as there is business type stuff and not any, any inappropriate type stuff, there's nothing illegal happening when you're speaking with someone under the age of 18. The only issue where you have to have legal stuff happen is if you're going to be entering into a contract for business business things or if you start going in an inappropriate way. None of that was done. It was just conversations. Uh, and it says that it did lead towards something, you know, is leading towards inappropriate, which would possibly be, it could be widely interpreted. People went for the sexual inappropriate in, inappropriateness. Could very well be that they were trying to enter into a business relationship, which is also inappropriate to enter with a minor if you do not have consent of the the minor's adult parents or, you know, someone else. If they're emancipated or if, you know, some other kind of guardianship because that's the way I interpret it at least so that people aren't going to be like, oh, well, he was trying to be inappropriate with a minor. No, it could be various things. It could be anywhere from business to the other side of inappropriateness. Now, continuing with the last part that I wanted to get before we start talking again on just, you know, ideas. He, in it, it, Dr. Disrespect, initiated proceedings because he's, he heard that information about, you know, they're, the, that they were pushing the sexting allegations. They are pushing those things, which could ruin anybody's anyone out there any person any person that is in the public sphere once you get those type of allegations pushed against you you are screwed you can easily be screwed in the court of public opinion he wanted to go against that and that's where everything came out of no party amidst wrongdoing because it went to arbitration they settled he got paid out his full contract he was happy but the problem was the big problem was in here and that's what the rest of this goes over is that it was former twitch staff members has made the tweet which cody is the person that was mentioned and and now that can't be walked back dr disrespect is furious he made his own tweet as we have we have read uh the tweet may have made some things invalid we don't know legality of it uh, hopefully he dealt with a lawyer in that one and hopefully he was able to get a lawyer to kind of uh, read over his basic stuff yes he could put emotional emotional stuff in there but read over the basic premise of not breaking an nda could have already been broken we don't know he will probably be going for legal avenues against the person dan Dio is likely broken um he'll be fine cody is in trouble cody is in big trouble um even if he wasn't under this nda he can get hit with what's known as torturous obstruction or torturous um interference of a contract yeah torturous interference. it carries some pretty hefty um reprimands to it yes Yes, and that's what this one says as well. This email says that as well, that there are going to be legal avenues explored. He's probably going to be able to sue again for Twitch for breaking the his privacy for uh, also Cody going and putting this stuff out because that can not only be seen towards this interference. Twitch hasn't done anything wrong here. Oh, okay. Twitch is not liable for this. Okay, so it's, it's Cody. and Dr. Disrespect will both go together and sue Cody. Ah, uh, okay. So that, that is a good correction to make. It's a good correction to make here. Twitch will not be hit with this. It will be Cody because he's interfering, number one, with, with the whole agreement that happened between Twitch and Dr. Disrespect, from my understanding. And also, it is it can be considered, I'm not sure if in Canada or, or can be considered that way. It's definitely torturous interference of both parties, but it can also be considered um, damaging to his brand. It can be considered da slander, defamation, whichever way it was it was formed. It could be considered that. And 100%. There, he's in violation of defamation. Yes. Because he putting out sexting allegations when there was Actually, no proof of this. this is technically yes. defamation per se, which has a higher standard. Ah, okay. Defamation per se has a higher standard, but he still broke that. That is insane. So defamation per se is something that is contained within defamation. And what happens is basically if someone calls you a pedophile, alleges to criminal activity, or like you have an STD, this immediately raises the standard of proof. Like to prove that someone is a pedophile in the court of law, they have to have a criminal conviction. Ah, uh, okay. If they don't, you are immediately liable for defamation because that is objectively damaging to somebody's reputation absolutely it absolutely is and 
that is the issue that is right here. It says when he publicly backed Nick Merckx recently, the same group of current Twitch ex Twitch employees tried to identify if they're compromised separation agreements from Twitch because they, they got separated from Twitch because of this, it seems like, uh, would be nullified if they spoke out and uh, only one had the guts after testing waters numerous times before selling concert tickets. That's Cody, the person we're talking about. They would have been fine legally if he had not monetized the word sexting. Uh, because it was all about damaging Dr. Specs' re reputation, but because he used the word, legal proceedings will happen, as we mentioned, because that word it le leads to a lot of damage, repu uh, reputation, reputational damage, intentionally damaging reputation. It seems malicious in the way that it was done. It can be proved more than likely in a legal court of law. Look at what's happened right now. Look at his situation right now. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the big issue. Murder, they're large YouTube creators who, who are not getting this right because they don't have this document. The only other large YouTube creator that I've seen review this document is Admin Code of all people. Everyone else is going with the tweet of admission of guilt and they are just running with it. Yeah. And that is that is the big problem. And this person on the bottom part says you have a duty to balance reporting on the such times because he's getting angry at this person is mentioning, you know, other people like we mentioned before, Mudahar, others who don't have all the information out there and are just spreading what they have, which you can understand up to a certain point. But allegations like that, they can be, you know, pulled in to legal proceedings as well if they don't correct it or if they don't say, you know, as far as I know or do other things. It's like, I don't know this for sure, you know, do other kind of legal ramblings to make sure that things aren't seen as them saying this is what's happening unfortunately a lot of them are saying Anybody this is what's happening who has gone on their platform and called him a pedophile or a predator is open themselves up for litigation they, they are a hundred percent guilty or not guilty but liable for defamation and this is not a jury trial situation this is what's known as summary judgment where the, ju the judge sees that this is just an objective breach of civil uh, proceedings and they will just make a judgment on it yeah and that's why i wanted to talk about this i am a tiny tiny creator of course but i wanted this to be out there at the very least so there can be this information out there so that it can be shared so that a doctor disrespect does not keep getting this defamation going on if it were the case that he was found criminally responsible in this way that would be different if there were criminal proceedings and he was found by a court of law to have done these things that's different right now this is all cancel culture this is all people in the twitter sphere going against somebody based on him just pretty much venting and that is a problem that i see that's why i wanted to have eva talk to me a little bit kind of give me a little bit more of a rundown have the full thing out here the main reason why I also wanted to have this out here is because, of course, it, got, it gives no identifying information. Everything that needs to be redacted has been redacted. Of course, we are not making any allegations of the PDF the variety. We're not making any of those type of allegations because none of that is true. None of that has been proven. It went to civil, 100% yeah. civil versus the, criminal. The process of events would have happened like this regarding this case. Yeah. They would have entered discovery. Um, it would have been looking like a jury uh, trial. And then in discovery, they would have found out this extenuating circumstances and then they'd enter arbitration. Um, in arbitration, uh, there might have been a probe by the district attorney to see if there was a preponderance of evidence, which is it is more likely than not that this happened. And then a grand jury would indict um, Dr. Disrespect and then that would go to a criminal trial. So they did probe, they did look into the criminal aspects of this and they found nothing, which means that he is not criminally guilty of anything here. And talking to a minor is not a crime. It is how the conversation goes. It is how the conversation is doing. You can help a minor out if they have issues, that type of thing. Uh, but of course, like I mentioned, the inappropriateness could have very easily been business related could have been trying to get them to enter a contract, could have been trying to get them to do that after finding out that, there were, that they were under the age. Doesn't necessarily mean impropriety, you know, like in the sense of, of doing anything of an S nature of that type of, you know, beyond that type of nature. Uh, so I just wanted to make that doubly, triply, quadruply clear that there is no proof out there that there was any sexting involved. Just wanted to put that. Thank you so much, Eva, for being here. Um, I'm going to be uh, ending the... the uh, the actual recording at this point. 
But thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving that. No problem. Um, I need to head out anyway. My computer is piping hot. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Once again, Elf Pirate Eva, I'm going to have the channel down below so you can check them out as well and check out any content that they make. Thank you again. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.